Love you. I don't know. Can you hear me? I hope everyone can hear me. Um, thank you so much, Taide, for um, the the introduction and um, yeah, thanks so much for the uh, team of the USBAC as well for organizing this webinar. Um, it's great to be here and thank you everyone for taking the time today. Um, the topic of the webinar, why influencer marketing is important for, for any e-commerce business. And um, um, let me introduce you myself um, quickly. So my name is Daniel, uh, Daniel Tresh. I'm a co-founder of Forces Media. And we are helping brands um, to implement influencer marketing into their digital marketing mix. Um, we offer two things. On the one side, a self-service platform that allows our users to discover and connect with more than uh, 790,000 influencers. And on the other side, we're offering a consulting and managed service solution that helps um, especially small, medium business to build up and manage efficiently their, their influencer marketing programs. We have been um, working with a quite diverse range of, of companies across different industries and sizes, but the, um, but the majority of our clients wants to leverage influencer marketing actually for their e-commerce e business. And um, that's why today I'm uh, happy to talk about the topic, why influencer marketing is relevant for, for any e-commerce business. And um, I'm going to, to start by um, discussing a bit like some basics definitions examples um deep dive then into how influencer marketing fits into the digital marketing mix of an e-commerce company talk a bit about how to track um results and measure results uh, for influencer campaigns and um, what are the steps to run an influencer marketing campaign efficiently then we conclude with a qa session and um, as Tide said like um we will um take the, the questions and then um, yeah answer them at the, the end of the presentation. Okay, um, let's get, get started um, with the question, why influencer marketing is important for, for any e-commerce um, brands? Um, and I think it's like the, the corona lockdown um, has really has really shown that e-commerce is not only a nice to have anymore, but it quickly turns to be a major way how consumers um, are buying products and services. And um, as people are forced to stay home, um, they spend more time than ever online, and especially more times on their on their mobile phones, right? And a lot of time is is spent on social media channels where they consume hours of content. And especially the high quality, high engaging and mobile optimized content people are consuming on, on social channels um, have an impact as well on their expectations, how e-commerce brands shall tell their story. And um, that obviously translates into rising expectation when it comes to content personalization and an improved user experience on the brand's websites and channels. And um, additionally, consumers are more likely to trust content over traditional ads, right? So the authenticity um, of content and marketing um, becomes key. And um, that's why it is becoming crucial that brands not only create content, but that they are actively engaged on, on the social channels and that they're really part of that conversation that's happening on, on social media. However, many marketers um, that we are talking to are uh, struggling to keep up with these growing demands, right? Um, they often lack, um, especially if you're a smaller business, um, the lack resources to scale a content game quickly. And um, that's where actually um, influencer marketing comes into play um, because consumers are actively looking already for advice and are turning towards social media influencers um, or other experts and that have an online presence. So it's like to get insights, tips, and get inspired, especially in difficult times like now. And um, influencer marketing became a crucial part of many e-commerce businesses as it enables marketers to collaborate with influential content creators to tap into these ongoing conversations. Um, and by collaborating with influencers, Brands cannot only drive awareness and, um, and increase their exposure, but they can really benefit from the co-creation of authentic, highly engaging, and mobile-optimized content at scale. And um, 
therefore especially as people are not only spending more time consuming content but they are more open than ever to purchase online influencer marketing becomes a perfect marketing tactic for e-commerce business right um, e-commerce business can capture that audience online and drive it through the digital sales funnel leveraging influencers to create awareness leveraging the influencer generated content and to build trust and drive con uh, conversions now Having said that, let's let's take a look at um, what is influencer marketing um, in some definitions. Um, influencer marketing is all about collaborating with bloggers, YouTubers, Instagrammers, TikTokers, you name it, to endorse um, your products and services online, right? By partnering with an influential social media personality, you can leverage the influence these content creators have built over their thousands of followers, right? And uh, by partnering with influencers who review, test, and talk about your products, you can really grow your brand awareness um, in a very authentic way, increase engagements and trust and drive sales. Now, to simplify a bit, um, let's use an example to explain how this whole influencer marketing actually works, right? Um, and um, here we see it's like a brand manager who's looking to scale a business. Um, she can search for um, fitting influencers in her niche, send them products. Then these influencers test and review and, and create content. So it's like and getting these influencers in hand, uh, the, the product in, in the hand of the influencers is key so that they really can create authentic content. They create pictures videos and text about the products and then post it on their own social media channels. The key here is that they introduce the brand to their audience in their own words, right? And uh, let me repeat this because I think that's like the important part of influencer marketing. Um, the influencers really can introduce your brands um, and your products to the audience in, in their own words, right? It's not the brand who's talking about the products, but it's the influencer talking about uh, your products. And um, so we refer sometimes as well to influencer marketing as um, word of mouth marketing at scale. Let's um, have a look as well as like to in which um, extent influencer marketing differentiates a bit from, from other marketing methods. Um, you might have used um, like Facebook ads, um, search engine marketing, Instagram advertising, etc. right? And I think it's like the key difference is um, in who creates the content, where it is distributed, how authentic is the content, and it's like how long is content actually um, online. Right, it's like um, think about it's like if you create a Facebook ads or it's like if you work with uh, search engine marketing, it's you as a brand who needs to create the content. You need to um, pay the channel to to get the content distributed, and um, it is in a sense, or the content has in a sense a lower authenticity because it's obviously you as a brand talking about your own product. On top. It is um, most of the time marked as, as ads, so it's always marked as an ad. So it's like there's a certain impact from, from ad fatigue, right? It's like people um, might um, use ad bloggers, et cetera. So it's like um, a certain percentage of people might not even see your, your, your advertising. And then on the other side, obviously, as soon as your paid Facebook budget or um, budgets on, on Google ads um, is banned, and it's like you stop it, it's like the content is not live anymore. In contrast, influencer marketing, you're working with an influencer, you're giving them some guidelines and it's like they're creating the content and they have been building their audience for years. So they know pretty well about, you know, it's like what content will convert, what is the right content they should show their audience. And so they will create this content. Then we'll distribute the content on their own channels, sending it to their communities. And um, therefore it's, it's, it's very, or it's like there's a higher authenticity obviously because like it's another person talking about your brand, right? Recommending the products, talking about why they are good or it's like why someone liked this product. And um, so there's no, no impact from an ad fatigue because it's people are actively following a certain influencer and um, 
and therefore you know expecting to get insights from these influencers so it's like the whole thing of ad blogging etc is not impacting influencer marketing activity so it's like your content um will be seen from potentially more people and the other interesting thing is obviously that this content stays online so it's like if you're working with a youtuber um a blogger an instagram and the content stays live and um the interesting part especially for e-commerce business as it is a very ri driven um business is that the ri of an influencer marketing campaign is increasing over time so it's like similar to to seo once you have paid for the content, it stays online and it continues to drive traffic, right? And um, I just pulled um, an example um, statistics from a campaign which we actually um, published um, around two years ago. It was in July 2018. Um, it's a YouTube video and you're seeing here the statistics from BitLine. So we included a BitLine link in the statistics. And it was interesting that even after two years, you can see here, that um, there's on a daily basis still 20 to 30 clicks coming onto these landing pages, which we integrated with a Bitly link back in the time in the YouTube video. And um, in total, this generated 23,700 clicks. So it's, it's a, a great example of, you know, it's like how once the content is live, it stays live and it continues generating traffic for, for you. Now, let's look at a couple of examples of social media influencers, right? So it's like, who are influencers? Traditionally, influencers were celebrities, athletes, actors, right? The Michael Jordans um, of the world. But those ones um, are often for especially smaller businesses and e-commerce businesses, um, yeah, far too expensive, right? And um, that's why it forces us, we have been working a lot with so-called micro-influencers. So it's like micro-influencers are bloggers, YouTubers, Instagrammers, experts who have, or experts who have a certain, um, yeah, expertise in a niche and who have developed over time a trusted audience on their, their social channels. And these micro-influencers have a following of up to 250,000 um, on these accounts, right? And um, it can be lifestyle influencers, could be YouTubers, um, moms um, and parenting, or it could be a, a gardening expert, right? And it's like the interesting part of, of working with a micro influencer, especially for e-commerce uh, company, is that there are such so many more micro influencers you could tap into, and you will always find someone who is really, you know, it's like talking already to the audience of your of your niche, right? Um, now, after we've talked a bit about, you know, the basics and discussing what is influencer marketing, who are influencer, I wanted to um, talk a bit about um, what we've seen is like how you can integrate influencer marketing into the digital marketing mix of an e-commerce company. And I think that's crucial because influencer marketing um, should never be in seen as just a standalone uh, marketing tactic because it is so powerful especially if it is um played in combination with other marketing tactics you're already using right and um if you're thinking about um e-commerce or um on the highest level of any successful e-commerce business you need to be able to attract relevant traffic and um, channel it through a set of pages on the website to con convert these visitors to paying customers, right? So it's like you drive website traffic, people come to a landing page, they add a product to a certain um, basket, and then it's like at the end, hopefully they um, pay and um, become a customer. Now, again, on the highest level, for any e-commerce business, you need to attract relevant traffic and then convert this traffic uh, traffic into sales and to get relevant traffic you can leverage um, a multitude of of marketing tactics right it's like i've listed here for instance search engine optimization um, to drive organic searches um, you can use search engine marketing paying googles for being uh, listed in a higher position and to be found for certain keywords you can use Facebook ads, Instagram paid ads, um, 
you can build out your social media channels to drive as well awareness um, you can work with with affiliate marketers etc and all of those channels they drive traffic on the on the top of the funnel to your website and influencer marketing is um, as well a relevant traffic generator um, but the interesting part of influencer marketing is that it's not only a traffic relevant but influencers create um, very high engaging content that you as a brand can reuse then in the steps further down in your funnel where you want to actually convert um, users into customers, right? So meaning influencers are creating social signals and backlinks, right? So like if they're sharing content and they add your, your link of your website into their blog posts or on their YouTube videos, they're creating um, powerful social signals which optimize obviously your, your SEO tactic. You can reuse as well um, the best performing content pieces of your influencers in a Facebook ads campaign. That's extremely powerful because you can combine um, both of, um, or the best of both worlds, right? It's like you, you get authentic content from influencers and then use actually the highly targeting options of Facebook to distribute the content further to, uh, to your audience. Um, or you can leverage influencer-generated content on your own social media channels and your websites, right? It's like you get these pictures, videos um, that influencers have been generated, and you add them to your own social media channels and your website. So therefore, influencer marketing does not only help to drive traffic to your website, so it's not only on the top of the funnel, but it plays a key role as well in building your brand, building your trust, and creating social proof. Right? If you can display photos of, of people using your products, that builds social proof and it helps you just to convert better in the different other steps down in the, in the sales funnel. Summing up, um, influencer marketing can play a, a key role in your, your digital marketing mix if you want to drive awareness, create new traffic, but it's well important in any of your content marketing strategies you want to apply. Leverage influencers to create personalized and customized content for any of your campaigns, right? Um, it's a very full, very powerful strategy and um, can help you in a multitude of, of uh, act marketing activities. The other thing, obviously, a lot of people want to, to use um, influencer marketing for is drive sales, right? And um, influencer marketing is can be a very powerful driver for sales if done correctly. Now, um, to be honest, obviously, similar to any other um, marketing tactic, um, if you do not have like a, a great product or it's like you still need to figure out what is your, your best conversion um, funnel, um, influencer marketing will not fix this from, from, this, from the get-go on, right? But um, we created a a process, what we called the influencer marketing funnel. And really the idea is to, to use influencer um, and influencer generated content to, to drive traffic to your page. Um, so create this first awareness. And then once people on the, on the page, you can use Facebook pixels, email marketing, um, et cetera, to retarget those visitors in an efficient way to drive them down the sales funnels. And then on every single step, the further the um, customers goes down into the funnel, you can then apply again and use again um, the influencer generated content, right? And um, it's, um, it's a very um, powerful way of combining like your, your different activities and making the use of, of um, influencer generated content in, a, in the most effective way. Um, we will share it's like if you want to, you know, take a deeper look. Like we have the um, influencer marketing funnel on our website. I'm happy to share as well the link. There's more details to it. So it's like um, if someone is interested, please reach out to me um, after the presentation, and I I can share this um, funnel as well with you. Now. To be successful in influencer marketing, 
you actually need to be sure about your goals um, as in any other marketing uh, campaign and uh, then have a campaign design that will actually translate your efforts into numbers, right? And um, I wanted to share a couple of um, campaign designs you need to know um, which work pretty well to leverage influencer marketing. Now, in the first idea, the, the, the key thing of a successful influencer marketing campaign um, is that you bring influencers or the influencers you want to work with in, in touch with your products, your services, and provide as many information about your brand and the story behind your brand, right? So because the influencers need to create the content and they need to be able to explain in a very authentic way, actually, what your brand stands for, what's the story, um, why the product is great, um, why they suggest actually to use this product. So the best way is like to send them the product, let them test it out in an ad as well as like on top, like additional information around your brand, the story, etc. cetera. Um, what is great if you're, for instance, having some more, a way to invite people into a, a local event, um, or as well into a Zoom event um, or a webinar um, where you can just share information and it's like, you know, it's like let them ask questions around your brand. Um, we've seen that um, was pretty powerful, especially if you have the possibility to do an offline event. So it's like, for instance, here you can see we've done an event for, for Philips where we invited um, influencers into a barber shop. They tested then together with the barbers whose office, who are obviously the experts in, in shavers, uh, tested the new shavers. And um, we did video content um, about the unboxing and like about the first hand experience when they used to shave us. So it's like, and then afterwards they con um, distributed this content. So that's obviously a bit more cost uh, costly, but it's like you could um, invite people as well as I said, just to a webinar and, and explain a bit further your products um, while everyone is, is dialing in. In the second steps, like what is important that you um, let the influencer then uh, create the content and share them on their, their social media channels, right? Um, the um, question there is um, you always need to think about um, what is your audience, right? And where is your audience um, active? Uh, for instance, and um, if you're looking to reach um, a very young uh, audience like Snapchat, um, TikTok is a great cha channel. If you're looking to um, reach maybe a, a bit older audience, um, Facebook is good. Um, if you're looking to, to reach gamers or or rather a male audience, YouTube and, and Twitch are the right channels. And the same as well as like the kind of content you want to create, right? Is your product rather, you know, a product where you need to, to provide a lot of information? Uh, think about an electronics or an app, which is not, you know, easy to understand and comprehend whether this, this, this service or product is created just with a picture, right? So then uh, video content is great, and then you should rather look for um, for asking your influencers to share it on YouTube or Instagram stories, you know, it's like video content. So that's the, the part, influencer social coverage, um, where you need to think about that, and it's like um, people shared in their content. And um, what worked pretty well for uh, campaigns is really that you're running as well um, what we call omni-channel campaigns, right? It's like that uh, it's not only um, an Instagram is normally active as well on Facebook and has potentially a blog, etc. So try to combine those um, different channels uh, in one campaign, and, and that has been proven uh, pretty successful in the past for when we work with other e-commerce companies. In the next step, um, as mentioned already, it's like an important part, or it's like very powerful, is that you um, have the possibility once the influencer content is live, you can really um, identify um, the most success, successful content, right? It's like in terms of where did you see is like the, the highest engagements um, where did people react on it the most, um, where, which content drove the highest quality of engagements. And then it's like you can reuse this content in, in paid campaigns. Um, you can use videos, um, or pictures to create um, Facebook carousel deals um, 
carousel ads um, and then drive people as well as like to certain landing pages. Um, and there as well as like if you create landing pages, you could think about reusing again the influencer content. So it's like, for instance, if you reuse a, a picture from a, from a certain person in a Facebook ads, the landing page could include as well this picture so that there's a really a direct uh, connection between the ad and your landing page, which makes it then um, highly, um, um, yeah, high conversion um, campaign. In the long term, it's like it's then interesting. Once you work with influencers and you build out um, the relationship, um, there are two options to build out a longer term relationship, right? It's like the one thing is the influencer ambassador programs. You might have heard about it, and the other side is like an influencer affiliate program. Um, both are similar because you can combine it as well. It's like I, I think it's like the key difference um, for between influencer ambassador program and affiliate program is that the ambassador program might potentially um, have some cash compensation included while the influencer uh, affiliate program is basically um, just paid on commission um, and the ambassador program um, normally um, there's a bit more interaction between the brand and, and the ambassadors, right? Because um, they're really representing the, the brand over a longer period of time. Um, they get invited maybe to, to, to events, um, get um, access to certain offers, et cetera. While the, the affiliate program is powerful as well, it's like you can build out um, a bigger group of influencers you regularly work with, um, share information, give them extra discounts, et cetera, so that they continue promoting your brand. Um, so that's like the, the key uh, concepts of um, campaign designs, um, which we've seen uh, work pretty well. Now, obviously one of the, the, the major questions any e-commerce company asks, like how can we track results, right? It's like, how can we measure it, um, data and it's like, um, Results-driven marketing is like obviously for an e-commerce uh, company extremely important. And um, the good news is with influencer marketing, you can can um, measure a lot of things. Um, so if you work with influencers, you want to create a campaign that really drives followers into your sales funnel, right? Um, from the community of the influencers to your website and then into your sales funnel. And um, you can really measure all results by combining um, either the public visible information on the social media pages, um, social media insights, which you can receive from the influencers, and as well um, in combination with your internal reporting, right? Like affiliate links, voucher codes, Google Analytics, etc. And um, as I said, so it's like, let's have a look how you can me measure actually the, the whole funnel, right? Um, on, the, on the highest level, right? So like what you can measure is like the brand reach. So it's like how many people did my campaign reach or did we, uh, or did the influencers reach um, and how many impressions did the posts get, right? So on the one side, the number of followers is the, in, in, um, the KPI or the, the, the number you can look at for saying it's like that's the potential reach um, and the impressions, um, that's the number of how many people have really seen my content or the content of the influencers. Um, number of followers is a public social profile data which you can get and then obviously the analytic um, insights from the influencers uh, will show you what's the, the, the post impressions. The next level you want to look at is the number of engagements, right? Engagements like number of likes, number of comments, shares, etc., cetera, um, shows you how many people really had a deeper look at the content, reacted to it, shared it. Um, and because that's, that's mainly the group who most probably will take action then visit your website and, and take, um, yeah, potential um, will convert into, into sales. Now, likes, comments, and shares, as well, public social profile data information, once the post is live, um, 
you can ask always as well the influencers to share with you analytics insights um, to see, especially for instance, for Insta stories, etc., how many people um, commented or it's like forwarded a message, send a message, um, and um, who tagged it, etc. So it's like um, plus you can get a little more information on the the audience distribution there as well. But now after you have those two things, the next step in the funnel is to see how many people actually um, went to your site, right? Um, site traffic, you can measure by um, the website visitors, landing page visitors. And um, for measuring that, you have a couple of options. On the one side, um, it's always important that before you're um, you know, before the content is live that you're sharing kind of trackable links with the influencer. So um, either you set up UTM parameters um, so that you can track everything directly in Google Analytics or you can create a clickable links. Uh, like you've seen before, I, I did this with Bitly. Um, or if you have an affiliate marketing tool, you can use as well affiliate links and um, send a personalized link for, for each to each influencers. Um, and then it's easy um, to track where the traffic comes from and how much website traffic you got. And then on the on the end level and the goal of, of uh, each funnel, obviously, um, the sales. Um, so it's like how many products did you sell through this campaign? What's the revenue? Um, the basis for calculating then as well the RI combined with the, the costs um, of the campaign. So it's like for measuring sales, um, there's either if you're using UTM parameters or affiliate links, uh, you can see that most probably directly in the affiliate program or in Google Analytics. Um, or you set up customer voucher codes um, per influencers, discount codes, which are unique for each influencer so that you can really um, you know, know who did how much sales for you. Now that's, that's all kind of like hard figures, um, which obviously are important. And on top of, of um, that, you can, can measure influencer uh, marketing ROI or results as well in, in different other ways, right? It's like the positive SOI, SEO impact um, by working with influencers and seeing like whether there was an impact on your Google uh, rating. Then you can talk as well as like the number of pictures and videos which were generated, um, trust which were uh, generated, um, indirect site traffic. Um, so it's like, was there any boom, you know, it's like on, on site traffic while you were running this influencer campaign, people haven't clicked on the, the clickable links. Um, and then as well as like an, an another nice side impact is like having influencers, um, you know, it's like reaching out to you. It's like they've seen other influencers working with you. So that's a couple of other things you should take into consideration. Was like how you can actually measure um, the impact on it's like our I for for an influencer marketing campaign. Let's take a look at a couple of real life examples of campaigns we did. For instance, we've done a campaign for Rebuy, um, which is an um, online marketplace in in Europe. Um, and um, so it's like the, um, um, uh, we did a couple of, of YouTube uh, videos for them um, and we reached like 3.8 3 million subscribers um, had at the end 487,000 video views and um, generated actually 55,000 um, landing page clicks. And you can see, uh, what was great, it's like, and, and that's where I'm always suggesting YouTube as well as like for channel. If you have like products which have a, a higher um, a price point or shopping basket, um, the average shopping basket was here four hundred ninety um, dollars, and the campaign or ROI uh, which we achieved was two hundred seventy eight percent. So there were great numbers, um, and then there's other campaigns um, which obviously depending on the the goals and the setup have different kind of metrics. For instance, we run a campaign for hotels.com, which um, which is obviously a hotel booking or an online booking um, company. Um, so it's like it's an affiliate based um, a program where we earned like $10.82 for every dollar uh, hotels.com spent. Um, we had a 
cost per click on average of 0. Um, or 35 cents, um, which is quite good. It's like um, if you look at the the costs normally in the travel industry is like quite high, especially if you're looking at SEM uh, costs. So um, that was an interesting campaign as well. It shows how you can measure it. And another campaign example was a campaign with um, the online giant Groupon combined with Papa Jones. Um, we did a national campaign, so it's a branding campaign um, which had different goals, um, which generated more than 116 influencer publications, reached more than 20 million people, um, and generated 85,000 landing page views, uh, landing page visits. Now, that's obviously um, a bigger scale, and I like, just want to show is like um, there's depending on different kind of campaign goals, different kind of setups, um, a lot of data you can collect and compare actually then with um, your other marketing activities and, and build this out further, right? Okay, um, after, and we touched a bit of that already um, during this, um, to look at how actually uh, can you run an influencer marketing campaign step-by-step, step, right? Um, the idea here is, is like what we do is like in, in our uh, managed service approach is um, we're running this, these kind of campaigns or we divide it in, in, in six, six major steps. Um, I'm going to um, go brief over it, um, but I just want to recommend um, our blog, forstas.com um, slash blog. Um, do we have actually a lot of interesting guides, templates, et cetera, for, for each of the different steps. So it's like if you're interested in running influencer marketing campaign or looking into um, a certain part, for instance, how to reach out to influencers or how to evaluate influencers, how to contract them, et cetera, um, we, we have written and um, a couple of good, good guides there. So please feel free to uh, visit the website there. But let's take a look. So um, obviously the um, start um, of any marketing campaign is, is defining your campaign goals, right? Um, depending on which audience you want to reach, whether you want to create awareness or drive sales, um, your campaign design uh, will rise. Like we touched base on that a bit before and um, just like once you you define the goals um, you need to think about the social channels right the type of influencers the content type um, and as well the call to action so um, meaning make sure that you set your campaign up in a way that you can really measure the results so it's like what we always suggest is think about what do you want to measure do you want to drive sales okay cool then you need to be able to measure this whole sales funnels as we, we set it up before. Do you want to measure brand awareness or it's like, do you want to um, increase reach? Okay, it's like, how do you want to measure this, right? So um, that's an important thing. And then based on that, how you want to do this, you need to define your campaign design and um, set the campaign up um, in this way. Now, once you define all these different steps, right? It's like the type of influences you want to, to work with, the content type, the call to action. Um, then you have a good idea. It's like, and you can build out what we call kind of like influencer personas, right? And um, that's where you can start the influencer discovery process. So it's like um, you could start, for instance, thinking about the type of influence or kind of audience, what kind of hashtags are people are, are looking for, right? Which kind of hashtags um, describe the content best, which I would like to see out of the campaign, and then find influencers, for instance, um, typing in this um, hashtags or um, use search tools like um, discovery tools, like the, the Forces Media ones. There's a lot of others out there as well, but um, there are certain ways you can find these influencers. Once you've found the influencers, um, you need to, to engage with them, right? It's like that means um, reach out to them, ask them to, to collaborate with you, explain them what you would like to do, what's the compensation, and build out a contract. Um, and um, that's one, one key before you're going in this content creation and publishing process, which is the number four. Really make sure that you have um, a good contract um, 
with each influencers where it is outlined what is exactly what you want like to see and um, what kind of content when should it be published how much content pieces um, which hashtags should it include which kind of you know links should it include etc there's so many um, moving pieces if you're especially working with a um, a couple or 10 influencers. So you want to make sure that you have everything written down in a contract and it's pretty clear as well to the influencer um, what they um, should do. Especially as well, um, once you're going into the content creation process, you want to make sure that in the contract it is included that um, you somehow can reuse the contract, right? That there's a license um, included um, that you really can repurpose the content um, and um, as well, what I always suggest to include in a contract or agree upfront that you have the right of um, a preview, right? So it's like um, ask the influencers and most influencers are very open to that because they obviously, it's a collaboration between you and the, and the, um, the brand and the influencers. Um, so it's like ask them for a preview for the content um, to avoid really like um, surprises. Um, and it helps you as well to um, work with the influencers on, on small details in optimizing this content before it gets published. Um, so that's the whole content creation and publishing process. Um, send them a guideline, let them create uh, the content, give them enough freedom to, to create the content. But then on the other side, um, be strict on, on some previews um, and um, especially the time when the, the content is being published. The content repurposing part is um, refers to the points, like I said, uh, once you have content live and you're seeing like there's good performing content, then you really want to reuse this content and, and uh, amplify it further via Facebook ads, right? Um, that's one thing. But you can post, obviously, as well, the content on your own social media channels, right? Because like once the, the pictures or videos are, are uh, created, um, you should make most of the use of it. Um, most, most of the times they, they write fantastic captions, uh, which are great quotes um, for your products, which you can use as well on the, on the website as a kind of an, uh, a review. Um, so you could send it out in, in, in newsletters, et cetera. And there's a, a lot of, of possibilities and, um, I find like always the the uh, good work starts after the campaign once as the content is live and then it's like you can think about it's like how you can reuse etc. Um, that's like the fun part then. And at the end, it's like the measurement and reporting. So it's like make sure it's like that you're getting in a timely manner. It's like the information from the influencers. Think about stuff like if you're asking influencers to create uh, Insta stories, for instance, that they're um, only 24 hours live. So it's like if you want to um, reuse the content, make sure that you um, use tools to download um, the content before it is gone, right? Um, and as well, um, ask the influencers to send you the reporting at um, a certain period of time so that you can uh, consolidate the, the reporting with, you know, it's like what they're sending you with the information you have internally as well. Um, yeah. Now, Having said that, I just want to, to go quickly through um, how you can actually discover influencers. And I'm going to use the, the example of our influencer marketing platform. But basically, the steps um, which are, you know, it's like shown on our influencer marketing platform, um, you can use as well as like to find influencers um, on the social media channels, etc. cetera. Um, it is, and the platform obviously helps you to have the whole process a bit more efficient because there's more data. So it's like the discovery tool uh, which we developed has um, a couple of um, search functionalities um, which mirror a bit like search um, functionalities you see on social media channels like on YouTube and Instagram as well. It's like so you can find influencers based on hashtags and um, certain content types, etc. Then we have a lot of in, um, filters, so you can define like whether you're looking for micro-influencer, macro-influencer, uh, what kind of minimum engagement um, rate you would like to see, where should the influencer be based, etc. So all this kind of information you might not be able to use um, on, for instance, in Instagram or YouTube, etc. Um, we built into this tool. 
um, each influencer has a detailed profile um, and you, as said, have a ton of filters to um, find the fitting influencers. And that's like, um, just want to highlight this again, it's like, and really put this in, it's like the key if you want to looking for, or if you're looking for influencers, really make sure that you understand like the audience of the influencers, because it's not, um, you know, it's like the, the most important part is that you find influencers who are really talking already to your audience, right? And so um, our tool provides all this information about the audience, et cetera, so you can easily um, use this and compare them in dashboards. But it's like, if you don't use our tool, make sure that you ask influencers upfront to send them their analytics and especially their audience analytics as well, so that you're, um, be before you contract them, right? Um, you can make sure that it's really uh, a relevant influencer. Um, so as I said, like we have a couple of information there and then um, um, an easy management tool, which basically mirroring all the steps, which I showed you before. Um, all this is available um, on the discovery tool, check it out. It's like we have a couple of, pre, um, we call it demos as well, but as I said, the, the process behind the tool can be mirrored as well as like um, in a manual campaign. And um, yeah, um, you can, can run this as well um, yourself. That's all what I wanted to, to say. Um, I thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to some questions. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Now give me one sec. Okay, so I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can. Oh, hold on. I can't hear it either at the moment. No. Maybe else. Tyler, I've seen it's like there's in the chat one 
one question. Maybe I take this up. Um, so thanks for, for the question, Olya. The question is about rates. So it's like, um, how and when do you cast them? And um, is there any etiquette about this? Um, that's a great question. So um, normally what we do is like, um, what we suggest to do is, um, you know, it's like the, the process is you find the influencers and then you contact them um, either via email or it's like um, direct message on Instagram, etc. And it's like in this first steps, like you just pitch your idea. So it's like what we normally do suggest is to, to write, um, um, to like that I've seen your, your question. I'm, I'm getting back to that in a moment. And um, so it's like the, and that's like basically you can, can talk about like, you know, it's like, what is your brand? What is your, um, what do you want the influencers to do? Um, and um, ask them whether the influencer has somehow like an interest in this campaign. And then once the influencers um, has an interest, normally it's like they, they will tell you, okay, cool, yeah, tell me more about the campaign. And that's then only where you can, um, can go a bit more into the pricing discussion, right? And um, what we do is like as influencers, and um, there's not, not a clear guideline um, how much to pay them and always depends a bit on the um, obviously influencer um, campaign, um, whether you send products, etc. So what we suggest is always like ask them as well as like look for the X amount of um, posts I would like to, to see and how much actually would you charge me, right? And then based on that, it's like you're getting into discussions and once you discussed and, and fine tune it, then you can um, finalize the whole thing in a, in a contract. I hope that makes sense, Olya. Um, then Tide, I've seen like the, the other question is, is this service good for um, service businesses? Um, so it's like definite influencer marketing in, 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 in general, um, you can definitely use for, um, for service business as well. If you're thinking about it's like here, there's a ton of, um, influencers on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, who are, um, obviously in a, in a B2B space as well for, um, service businesses um the um the tricky part is obviously that you need to give a bit more more background it's not so easy just to you know it's like send a product and test it out but it's like obviously people could come into um restaurant or it's like we have done a campaign uh, with coupon as well it's like where we send um influencers to uh, you know beauty salons uh, where they test it out where they wrote blog posts about it etc so it's definitely useful um then the question whether you can find influencers on on four stars for instance for service business really depends a bit on um what kind of service business you are right um on our platform the majority is in the in the lifestyle business um we have a lot of um gamers etc so it really depends a bit on on what kind of um service business you are in um so if you're uh, want to say like, I'm happy to to have a look if you want to send me an email afterwards um, uh, to Daniel at forstars.com. That makes sense. Can you hear me, Tide? Hey, Tide. Uh, let me let me maybe repeat this, this question. So it's like, um, the question is how much um, time a business needs 
to invest in the platform to to see results. Um, I think it's like the um, if you're if you're building like um, you know it's like if you have a good idea about like who is the influencers or the audience you would like to reach out, um, our platform is is quite um, easy to use. So it's like you can type in like um, the hashtags and find the influencers and start writing them um, immediately after one day, right? Then um, normally what we what we see is like once you're um, working with the influencers, it takes obviously a bit of time. So it's like um, you negotiate with them, um, which might take a week. You send products, which like takes another week. And then it's like um, people are um, creating content, etc., which normally is uh, around um, two weeks. So I'd say it's like two really run um, through one campaign with a couple of influencers, it is between four to six weeks you'd need to, to calculate in. Hope that answers this question. Okay, cool. There's another one. Um, what budget do you recommend to invest on a monthly basis for an e-commerce business that sells um, beauty products? Um, it's a great question. Um, it really depends a bit on <clears throat> what is what is the reach um, and what is you know it's like whether it's a national campaign or a regional campaign. Um, so what we um, what we see um, in terms of of pricing, maybe just a general remark. It's um, that you have between um, so it's a ten dollars CPM. So it's like ten dollars. 4,000 uh, followers on Instagram. If you're working with YouTubers, etc., cetera, um, we're seeing around like $25 um, per um, thousand views. Now, if you really want to start from, from scratch from, for a beauty brand, um, we recommend to, to start um, maybe, maybe small because you want to, to start testing out a couple of influences and, and build this momentum, the same with other campaigns. So you can start with a budget between um, two to five thousand um, dollars for influencers, which um, would give you a, a decent reach and it's like um, around um, 10 influencers most probably um, to work with. And then it's like you can can build uh, this out. Um, we've done this, for instance, for another um, beauty um, company, an e-commerce company, um, with a five thousand budget um, on a monthly basis for for a year, um, and we've seen um, quite good results there. Um, but obviously, that's depending as well as like a bit on on the speed and how quick you want to scale the things. Hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any further question in regards to the question, I'm happy to, to reach out to me as well um, via email. Um, another interesting question, do you recommend to work with an influencers if you own a restaurant? Um, that's um, definitely a very interesting um, way and it's like, I, I think it's, it's um, uh, a great way to, to work with influencers, especially if you're uh, working in a bigger city or it's like if you have like an area where you can drive um, certain more people in. Um, influencers, you, you can obviously work with as a restaurant in certain ways, right? So on the one side, it's like drive awareness, but on the other side, it's an interesting aspect as well to, to use um, the, the content they generate um, to make your website better is like to have better content on social media to, to reach new uh, target groups, etc. And we've done um, um, a lot of campaigns um, for pizza chains, um, for local restaurants in, in certain bigger cities um, where we drove in people um, where they, um, you know, it's like um, got some food um, and it's like then wrote about it. So I think it's definitely uh, makes sense and we've seen um, creating uh, good results in terms of great content um, and new visitors. Um, it's always like then the, the specific case as well as like what you want to achieve um, to, to be more equivalent there. The other thing, do you recommend working with an influencer if you're selling B2B? Um, I think um, B2B influencer marketing can be um, very impactful. 
Um, the the only thing is like obviously it's a bit more tricky to find like the right um, influencers because a lot of B two B influencers might be you know it's like um, co founders of other companies um, uh, or have higher positions in other companies and they're talking regular um, about a certain topic. Um, but definitely, um, be it on Twitter or on YouTube, um, B two B influencer marketing. Um, is a great tool as well as like to um, review new contents. Like if you think about um, bloggers, right, who review um, SaaS platforms, um, etc., um, it's it's a great way to to um, get your word out um, and let other people talk about it. Um, therefore, it's like we have been working with forces as well with a couple of um, B two B influencers, which were great. Um, the um, tricky thing only is that. Um, you know, it's like it takes a bit more more time to to find them and engage with them. Um, that's that's the only downside because it's um, you know there are not too many as like in the in the lifestyle space maybe. Um, the other question is, can I find influencers by zip code on your platform? Um, it's a great question. At the moment, we don't offer zip code, but we offer um, uh, based on cities. So it's like if you have to zip code um, for the city. You can find it. I understand that's like obviously if you're in New York or LA or a bigger city, um, you would like to have like a very um, specific target on a zip code level. Um, that's what we cannot offer. Um, but maybe just on a broader note, then there's interesting if you find like on a city level influences and you would like to you know spread like the the message into a very zip code area. Um, that's an interesting fact where you could combine as well as like then um, the influencer content with, with Facebook ads. I hope that answers the questions. And I said again, it's like if there's any, you know, open questions, please, um, please uh, reach out to me via emails like daniel at four stars, uh, four stars with zz at the end.com. Um, the other question, if I want to reach out to the Hispanic market, can I find Latino influencers? Um, at the moment, so it's like we definitely have um, Spanish speaking influencers, so it's like um, out of the Latino community in the US. Um, we currently, um, and that's maybe good to know, it's like we offer um, influencers from the US, Canada, um, and Europe. So if you're looking to find influencers, let's say, uh, in Mexico or uh, Latin America, some things like um, our our platform is not the best for that. Um, but it's like if you're looking for um, influencers, Spanish speaking influencers in the US, um, you could use our platform. So it's like we, um, you could apply then the language filters. Um, so it's like we offer um, language filters where you could find then influencers who speak mainly um, Spanish and for instance, uh, in that sense. Um, on their social media channels. Okay, another great question. Is your service monthly or do we have to sign a long-term contract? Um, so it's like our um, platform um, is really designed for the needs of small, medium businesses. So it's like that's um what uh, might differentiate us from from other platforms as well so it's uh, 59 dollars um there's no restrictions and it's um a 30-day subscription fee right so it's like it's um you sign up for 30 days and then you can cancel any time within the 30 days um then auto renews for 30 days but it's there's no long-term contract right so um it's really a month-to-month -month, uh, subscription thing and for 59 dollars it's um, really reasonable price, so it's like you could test it out as well and um, see what's the return on investment in the in the first month, for instance. Cool. Um, the um, if there's any other questions, so it's like um, 
the uh, you can find like a ton of information as well, like on four stars. So it's like f o u r s t a r z z dot com. Um, there's a blog. There's like um, pre-recorded demos uh, which you can zip through and like uh, have a look. Um, we're working um, on a regular basis as well as like uh, with the USBA scenes. Like and um, we're looking potentially to work on a couple other um, webinars. Um, and I think Tidy, we will share as well the link again um, where people can um, uh, go directly to to sign up um, on Four Stars. Um, as I said, like if there's any other questions around this topic, please feel free um, to reach out. Happy to get on a call with um, with you. And um, thanks so much again for the attention. I hope um, that was helpful. And um, yeah, looking forward to. Um, some further conversation with you guys. Um, thanks so much again, uh, it's either and USBAC. That's great for hosting it. Um, and I think it's um, great to have an organization like that um, for the e-commerce uh, companies in the, in the US. So thanks so much and um, have a great day.